I'm going to show you how to create an amazing animated stencil title effect for use with motion backgrounds in Camtasia so that you can hook your viewers with your title clips right away. Let's dive in. Hey, it's Gord here. Welcome. If it's your first time here and it's your passion to make great videos, become a ninja at video editing and learn more tips on how to succeed with video and marketing on YouTube, then make sure you hit the subscribe button and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss a thing. Now we're inside Camtasia and we're going to take a look at some cool Camtasia title effects with animated motion and kinetic text to get us started. Here we go. Wow, there's so much going on here. I'm going to share with you a bunch of the things we need to keep perspective on as we go through this tutorial. First off, you can see we have all kinds of animation uh, motion going on here with the text coming in uh, as a nice block. With the, There's white outlines on the letters. There's a motion background. There's uh, kinetic text uh, added at the bottom that vanishes. Here's the second example. There's no white outline. Bear in mind also that what we're doing here involves using the feature called remove a color, which is very cool. And we're going to go dive deep into how we tune that and use that in this tutorial. And in this next example here, we're also using colorize and, you know, just adding a few other dimensions to show you how to spice things up. So what we're going to do today is go through a bunch of examples. And in each example, I'm going to share with you some specialized tips. It's not so much about building these from scratch. You're going to see that once you learn the tips, you're going to have the tools you need to go and creatively go at this and have a lot of fun. So first off, in this first example here, which I made inside Camtasia, you can see here there's no outline text, but you see transparently through the 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 stencil I call it and you can see the motion background in behind so on the bottom layer is the motion background but on the layer above is just um, an annotation call out that is the the uh, rectangle shape with the, the text and you can I'm going to just show you how that looks here because if I click on the call out and I'll just remove the remove a color attribute for a moment you'll see there you go so this was just again one of the call outs with with the shape and the letters in there and I chose a green because we're going to substitute that color out. So let me put back that um, the remove a color feature. And something else to note is that when I'm when I go past the end here, I just extended the the um, call out a little longer so that you could see when we look at the remove a color that I've actually done some changes from the defaults, which you can tell by these arrows here. So if I reset this to the default, you see at 10 percent, it didn't clear out the green. So I went all the way up to 30. You're going to see here. It's just easier to just uh, key in the number. Go there quickly. Now we have a totally blank or all black screen, which is what gave us this nice clean result with the color removed. Okay. Now this one was done inside Camtasia. With example one, the stencil here is static. There's no animation of the text or individuation in the text and the motion. So that worked fine with the with the annotation that, that I showed you that we put on screen. However, if we want to go to an example like this in here, which is my second example, it uses what's called the shifting behavior to bounce the letters up and down. And that looks really cool with the motion background in behind. But to go about making this, it's a slightly different process. This is an annotation, just like I used in the first one, but the colors are different. But I added the shifting property, and you can see that the shifting property is just working on the whole chunk of letters as a block, and it's very subtle. It's not really doing a whole lot. But what we really want is this next piece, which you see here, which is showing the letter shifting. So to achieve that, I actually had to, um, let me just pull this down here line things a little better. I actually 
put the text on in two blocks. I have the I have the top piece and the bottom piece because I wanted the word city to be much bigger. But in order to get the text to go like that and the shifting property, sorry, the shifting behavior to work at the text and letter level, I need I needed to have that as a layer unto itself. So I actually created a gray shape in the in the background. And that was just uh, adding a shape rectangle through annotations, which you would just go to to shapes and I could add a rectangle and then just cut color it gray. And then on top, I added the, the two pieces of text and added, like I said, the shifting behavior and the shifting behavior, the in and the during and out have been just slightly modified here in the during to, to give the kind of effect that I wanted. So I played with loop time and uh, with uh, the duration of the shift. You can play with these parameters. It's all about your own customization and what you like best. But here's the key. Unlike the first example, this had to be made into a video clip. So what I did is after I completed this animation to where to the to my satisfaction, I just produced the timeline selection as and then I rendered um, a video file output. And that video file output is right here. So now that I have this here, we have one foreground layer that has the gray with the green. We now add that video clip on top here, on top of our motion background. And then we use the remove a color to substitute. And you'll see that we get the nice result. See, there we go. The colors are looking a little different because I used color eyes in addition which allows you to do a lot of other interesting things. So the key thing to note here, the second example versus the first example required the need to generate a video clip based on a layering of the text with the text effects that we showed over here. In this next example, I used PowerPoint because I desire to have uh, white outlines around the, the text, uh, the stencil text also known as stroke effect. And I also have a few interesting shapes in here. So you can't really get these kind of shapes inside Camtasia nor the outlining to this degree. Um, so I went to PowerPoint and when I went to PowerPoint, I created this slide, which I then saved as a PNG image to bring into Camtasia. When we go through here, you can see the effect works nicely. And the, we used the remove a color effect. Uh, you saw what it looked like when it was green and then when we put it in it worked pretty clean with just the defaults there was nothing necessary to change in our second powerpoint example i've created another one it's based on this little video clip and it's a video because of, it has animation so you see the things fade in and slide in and then grow and there is a problem with this as you can see with the transparency move, you actually saw the green, some of the green there as it was coming in, likewise with the shapes. So that's not going to cut it. So the tip here is when you're doing animations where these ones like fade in, or as in the case of this next example, which was another effect, a dissolve effect from PowerPoint, you're going to see that you, you, you get this green stuff happening on the screen as well. And so that just doesn't work because we need it clean. And so when the green actually goes through fading and dissolving like that, it's actually covering a greater color range than the substitution we made using remove a color. So you need to be sure that you pick effects that are clean, that just use the solid color, like a fly-in that doesn't do a dissolve or a fade, and then you won't have any issues. This next example is based on this graphic that I created inside Photoshop. Now let's quickly play a bit of it back to remind you, and we're going to go through a few of the details. Okay, so as you can see, there was so much going on here. There was an animation, there was a, a grow shrink effect that went on, and things scaled right down. And then as you can see here towards the end, they'll also trail out and disappear, okay? So there's a lot going on here and let's look in, in at the details a little more closely and I'm going to try and scale this back to uh, to show you. I know it's kind of a small image at the top, but I'm just trying to break apart a few things here. So first off is that that image which you see here and in that image it goes through a scale down and there's a there's a special um, there's an animation here as well as the, the scale behavior and the remove a color, of course. And then we go into the image just by itself to stay for the rest of the time period where we then meet up with the text and the line 
and the shape which are required to do this vanishing text part here that sort of comes up and then also disappears in, in the end, okay? Before it all disappears. And up top are the is the sound design work. And the sound design work is designed to right here when this first image is is the scale down is about to finish, you're going to see that there's a little exposure of the background, which is what causes the flash that's so fast. And in there, I have the, the, the thud noise of uh, the, the drum and around it are some whooshes and, and then another kind of whoosh noise as the vanishing text comes in that, that runs through. So you can see there's so many elements to this and I wanted you to see from a design standpoint. Now we're just gonna look at a few of those in a little more detail. So again, here was the image that we used in Photoshop. And then in the next step, I show you how I scaled up. So I actually took the image and um, did a, a scaling to it to make it to be much larger. So put that back to where it is. And in the, the image, we also did the remove a color. And you can see here, I had to tune the parameters because the arrows again here in, indicate that I did adjustments from the default. The default value here is 10 and I had it set to 20. And the default for softness is, is, is also, I believe, 10, and I had it set to zero. Okay, so you can see here that we did our tuning for the remove a color. We have the background. Then I'm just showing you the next step. Uh, I was where I added an additional um, scaling aside from what was done in terms of me just manually scaling up to be big. So this scale does a grow and shrink. It's a behavior. So you can see the in, it does a grow with a spring effect and then an out with a shrink. So we can tell the spring effect and I'm just going to make it a tiny bit larger. We can tell the spring effect. I'm just going to go frame by frame here. See first it started out actually smaller then sprung to larger and then come starts to come back throughout and then eventually it'll start to fade out. So that was adding the scale behavior. And then the next dimension, again, this is just a step-by-step -step way of showing you how things were done. I added a scale down animation. So if we go to animations, there's something called scale down here. And I just added it on to the line here. And my goal was to, to get the scaling down to accelerate at another level. So what I did basically was basically shrink the end, end result to be at this end keyframe so that it would gradually go down and scale down with a little more detail and a little faster. So see how that this scaling down happens and it goes down so far in the shrink as well that once that scale down's finished, now the, the shrink um, actually went smaller, which helped again create that flash effect. And then here, you know, again is the finished product as we looked at before. That's without the sound, okay? And then when the thud is done and, and, and the flash, then the static image is there. But this time, uh, in the scheme of things, I transitioned. You see here, there's a fade transition in here that goes for five, fra uh, five frames and fades into the background, solely the background. And then I start another whoosh sound right here as I start to bring in the text and notice that the text is standing out okay but and it's on that busy time-lapse background and what I did there to facilitate that was I had my text echoed a second time so in 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 one time the text here is done in white and in the, the part below it's done in black and you can see if we zoom in closely that they're just slightly offset to to create that effect so that the white stands out inside uh, on top of the black. So that um, is just like a nice little added touch that I thought you'd like to see. So like if I sat here and I was on the black box, you can see if I move it, you can see how it, how it shows whether I moved it up, down, around, and you can see that uh, how it shows there, okay? And it also has the drop shadow which helps the emphasis. All right, we'll put that back to where that was. And then the last part is you can see here that there's a couple of um, animations that I added. And those anim animations are in addition to the behavior, which is called reveal. So I put in a reveal behavior 
to bring this text in and the reveal behavior is you know highly customized it's based at the object level not the text and then i played around with the different ease movements that you can to come up with an effect that i wanted and uh, i literally played with all the parameters set the middle to none so it stayed and adjust those again with a bottom exit so again you know you can do the desired effect you want and then to help um, accelerate the the down i i also created an animation with an endpoint so that uh, the the text eventually went off screen okay in this example i have a gray background and white outline on the text so this uh, image was made in photoshop then i put the image on top of my background here which and i scaled it up so that the text filled the screen because that's what i want to apply my remove a color to so we apply the remove a color and i'm going to come in here and sample it and it looks pretty good now the next thing i want to do because i have the gray background and you see the different colors in the motion uh, time lapse background and behind are different it would be nice to have a, a color that was sort of more matched that so i'm going to bring in the colorize feature the colorize now i added that the colorize visual effect and now I'm going to change the color eyes to something that's more interesting. So we're going to go for orange. So you see how now that just nicely gave me the flexibility to change things up by using the gray background and, and using this color eyes feature to play with the, um, the foreground color. So that helps a lot. And you can play with that as well on the background. So if I wanted to, I could easily go in and I already have the color eyes feature there and there I already put the the red color on I could change it to a purple I could do different things and play with the color eyes all, all around one other thing is you can see the people in the word city there moving around I, I wanted to because this was a rather static uh, video clip even though it's time-lapse I wanted to speed things up so you could see more movement in there and, and I use the clip speed here as you can see here and I at 1.72 times likewise in my second half here where I'm beyond the stencil effect and I'm just doing the the vanishing text the, the, I sped things up significantly in the sunset portion here and it's at 4.19 so as you can see you can mix and match a whole bunch of things to create a very cool uh, title effect with animations and motion backgrounds Wow creating transparent titles spiced up with some animation effects and music really help to up-level the visual quality of your video productions. To see more cool animated text effects tutorials in Camtasia, click the links on this page or in the video description below. And be sure to hit the subscribe icon on this page so that you can get more videos to learn about video editing, video marketing, and YouTube. And thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.